Okay, we went one time around and we got ourselves a nice circular phenolic. This stuff is really hard to saw and I had to go back with the speed on the uh, saw quite a bit so I don't burn up the blade. And I already cut out the other one. Okay, I rigged up my shop vac behind the on the on the back side of the cross slide so I can suck off most of the dust, the fine dust directly at the tool and I don't have to breathe that crap. Um, I'm starting out with a, a rotor brooch. This is my biggest one, it's uh, 18 millimeter. It's really time to get some bigger drills for exactly for stuff like this. And we're going to open this hole up to yeah, yeah, I think 61 millimeters. Yeah, 61, and step drill it to fit the, um, the hop. Let's go. Okay, I bored the, the center of the gear blank to 61 millimeters and took a facing cut over the whole surface and now it looks like wood. I really love this material, it, it has a kind of a ret retro look to it, it feels a bit like wood, it looks a bit like wood, it smells horrible. Okay, I machined the, the stepped bore and uh, we can take the part out. Take the, this material tends to be a bit fuzzy on the edges um, and for deburring, the Noga deburring tool doesn't work with this stuff. It catches and produces a very ragged edge. A piece of uh, 180 or, or 280 grit emery cloth works best. Takes off the fuzziness from the edge. And you see, um, this is the, these, uh, the factory surface of this material, and when you face it off, it, it gets this the, the fabric structure in the material gets exposed. That looks quite beautiful. Uh, I have seen um, knife handles made out of this, and this and it looks really cool. Okay, now we're going to turn the. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to turn the gear blank down to thickness and to the outer diameter. So we clamp it up on the on the inside of the bore. Check for run out, make sure it's running true so the inner and outer diameter run concentric later when we cut the gear teeth. And of course it's not, so we're going to adjust it. 
and I was one tenth of a millimeter, a bit much. That's about four thousandths of, an, of an inch. Oop, wrong direction. Okay, that's better. And we're about three hundredths of a millimeter. And that's due to the slightly fuzzy surface of the of this phenolic material. It it doesn't never get a super smooth surface as the small fibers of the fabric stick out and interfere with the point of the dial test indicator. And we'll we'll also make sure that it's running true or uh, yeah true in, in, in this direction. So we get the needle of the dial test indicator behind the part and check for okay that's it's a bit too much Ooh, a lot. Uh, okay that's I have to rechuck this part, damn it. Sometimes you really mess it up when you try to correct something. Okay, that's three hundredths of a millimeter. Let's recheck the bore as we unclamp the part. Okay, that's still fine. Now we can turn down the other diameter. I repositioned the, um, the vacuum cleaner to be above the tool so we don't mess it up. And I just uh, I cut a small witness mark so I see where I have to go. Um, other diameter will be 128.8 millimeters. And with the shop vac and the lathe going, it's a good idea to protect yourself. <laughs> Okay, that's the second gear blank finished. Now we can set it up on the milling machine. Okay, this is my setup on the milling machine. I have my rotary table set up with the dividing plate or uh, index plate. I have chosen the twenty-two no uh, the twenty-hole bolt circle. Uh, or whole circle and I'm cutting a 60 teeth gear so with a oh I need my notes. okay I'm back um, I'm cutting a 60 teeth uh, gear that means we have to index every six degrees this rotary table has a a ratio of of uh, 90 to 1, so I need to crank this 
thing here 90 times to get one full revolution. That means I have to go one and a half turns for six degrees because one turn of this crank makes a uh, four degree on, <laughs> on a rotary table. So I have chosen the 20 hole index uh, plate and I have to go 30 holes. So 20, one revolution and 10, half a revolution. Gives me 30, gives me six degrees of um, uh, spin of a thing on the rotary table. Um, I didn't set up the sector arms because um, I'm always using the same two holes and it's faster just to mark them with some red paint. The um, Let's get this on, on, on out of gear. Um, the gear blanks, I drilled them both drill them with some additional holes so I can bolt them directly to the table with long studs and I have two one to three blocks to support them to keep them about 60 millimeters away from the rotary table itself so I can come in with the gear cutter from this side and machine this direction in conventional milling um, so I can run it unattended with the power feed and don't run the risk um, of moving the gear cutter into the rotary table it would suck especially as the gear cutter is not mine um, what else yes setting the height of the cutter relative to the tool uh, to the workpiece the center of the gear cutter needs to be on center line with the um, with the rotary table and that's quite easy to do. I know that my that was the lamp. Um, I know that my rotary table has a center height of 101.1 millimeters. And I set my height gauge, the the small standard height gauge, to 101.1 millimeter and brought it up to the gear cutter and then I moved up and down until I got the point of the height gauge in line with the center of the gear cutter. I just lined it up by eye. Brought the camera in a bit closer and you can see that the point of the, the scribing point of the height gauge lines up with the center of the gear and I used uh, my magnifier to get it very close. Then I locked the head movement the, set, the, the height movement and we're good to go.
Okay, um, it's always a bit sad. Uh, there is a quite a bit of satisfaction um, when you do a dividing job on a rotary table or dividing head, and the last cut makes everything line up and came out quite beautiful. As you can see, we cut all the teeth 60 by number um, all around and should be almost done. And it even lines up with the with the old gear. Uh, feels feels quite good, like it should. So might be a success. At least I hope. Okay, I completely forgot to film the end of this video, um, and I sent out one of the gears already. Um, I will keep the second one as a as a spare one so I can fit it to the hub it belongs to if needed. Um, but apart from that this project is done. Hope you enjoyed it. See me working with a more unusual material and thank you all for watching. See you next time.